What is happening, everybody? Hola, senores and senoritas. We are doing a little special edition episode. WWR coming at you on a Monday. On a Monday. Well, this will go up probably Wednesday. This will go up Wednesday. Yeah. With uh, last week's episode Tuesday. Yeah. That didn't make any sense, but... Last week episode will go up on Tuesday. It's going to sound like shit compared to this one, Mm -hmm. because guess what? Guess what we just did? New podcast equipment. Mics, headphones, the little puff bar, and the zoomy zoomy. Zoom podcast bundle, four persons, so we can uh, get a little weird with it if we want to. Looking for some guests. Um, we DTP. Won't... What's that stand for? Down to podcast. Down to party. Mm-hmm. Um, big shout out to Mr. Andrew Arnold that listened to the podcast and saw a lot of potential, but said, you sure do need new equipment. He said you sound like shit. So I guess... Uh, and we said, yeah. Yeah, we do. Going forward, these podcasts are sponsored by the Arnold family. <laughs> it's the Arnold family. It's the Arnold family. Da-na-na-na. No, we really appreciate it. Um, it's nice that we haven't been just talking out of our ass saying we're going to get new equipment and just never doing it. So right. we finally got it. Uh, we did a little test run, and I think it's going to work. I think so, too. It sounds immaculate. We're going to play with it. Um, we haven't put it into our editing software or nothing yet but i'm i just can't help but think it's going to be great yeah it's a little different um it actually runs off of a memory card as opposed to plugging direct um and that way it will actually record individual lines of audio so that we can control and edit the volume on each independent microphone that's where we kept running into issues um with just sound differences is like my mic was ran on just a basic it's two channel where yours is on one channel and for whatever reason that one channel was picking you up so much yeah that, but then it would flip-flop every once in a while yeah so yeah, it was just funky not to get super technical on it but yeah no this is gonna be great i think you guys are gonna enjoy listening to us a lot more i've gotten several comments before where it was like yeah i really like the podcast but it's kind of hard to listen to because yeah. You sounded like you were on the moon, and Max was like sitting in your living room. Yeah, so. that's or what vice Andy versa. said too. He would, he listened to it on the way up to the trade show this weekend, and he said he had to put both headphones in to even try to pick up on the one that I was really really quiet on. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he was like getting his eardrums blown out on the other end of it. So, you know, this hopefully will resolve that. It's a pretty simple soundboard. We got a couple of sounds on here. Little applause. Cracking jokes. Cracking jokes. Yeah, there's... We never do that on this podcast. No, no, I bet you ever. guys never, ever laugh. It's very dry. Um, so pretty simple. Uh, record, play, pause, independent dials for your headphones and your microphones. Mute buttons. I bet you can't hear Tyler now, can you? Where'd I go? There I am. There he is. So simplified dumbed everything down but got one synonymous system and uh, you can actually plug in uh, zoom calls off of it and it'll actually record that as its own independent audio too so when we have to zoom zoom calls phone calls um both of those yeah yeah yeah. you can actually plug in and actually get audio from computers phones Mm -hmm. pretty much the whole nine yards as its own independent audio source which we have controls over too Mm -hmm. so pretty sick no i'm excited now um more excited than i even have been which was pretty excited but just just doing it right finally yeah um yeah. damn it feels right yeah and hopefully it's easy to edit i hope that i mean i'm assuming we're not going to have any squelching or any like audio pauses hopefully mm-hmm. Uh, which will just streamline the editing process so we can get these to you in a more timely manner yeah, there was a couple of them um, actually last week's episode. Thank God it's the last one with our uh, old shit. stuff. Shit, yeah. Cause, <laughs> shit, yeah. Um, I actually have the paper next to me here, and I've got one, two, three, 
four, five things that we wrote down for time stamps, and I know for a fact there was at least three or four more than that. Yeah. Um, just for editing, so it, it takes it takes a couple hours when it, you get that many just to siphon through it all. So, looking forward to this. Yeah, and this should actually make it a lot easier to go up on YouTube too. Mm-hmm. Um, we finally got up on YouTube. We threw all the first four episodes up at once, and we've gotten some really good feedback from the YouTube side of things as far as metrics go. And I think just being able to do video with that, with this new equipment, it's just going to take it to the next level. And it's going to interface so much simpler. I yeah. Mean, Easy plug and play. I mean, I plugged in the memory card, and it just records everything in such a simple drop-down menu. Your first recording is everything if you want to just throw it up like that um otherwise it splits it into individual channels it's just it's gonna be so slick dude don't throw up (laughs) (laughs) all right so it's monday like i said well this will go up on wednesday but how was the weekend big dog uh not not too shabby what'd you Um, do i think literally the only thing i did do was uh as you know tobin Yep. He uh, he swung by, and uh, he brought over brownie mix and some ice cream, and so we uh, we drank a bunch of Bush Lights and um, threw some hot brownie on some ice cream. <laughs> Sheepers, <laughs> little date night. Oh God! And we sat on the couch until about midnight watching, I believe, mostly just Modern Family. Oh, good. Yeah. So you know, real good St. Patty's Day, in. Um, <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. A little date night action. Did you, uh, did you dye your beer green like you're supposed to? No. Unbelievable. We, we never got around to Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. Should've. 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 Did you? No. No? No. You were kind of tied up this weekend, huh? I was, yeah. We were up in Minneapolis. Okay. What were you doing up there? There was uh, the Midwest Sports Show up there uh, Thursday through Sunday. This is the 90th year that they'd done it, and uh, we went up for camp. And we're doing a doing a little marketing and advertising, so it was a cool show. Um, kind of quieter than I would have expected, to be quite honest. I don't know. There was a lot of stuff going on. It was Big Ten tournament. Um, there was some big dance recital. Um, we actually got to. A lot of the basketball players were actually staying in the same hotel that we were, so we got to see some of the Purdue team and some of the other like big, Big Ten teams. Did you give them high fives? I didn't. No. Yes, for autographs? No, there were a couple of them. Pretty much all the ones we ran into didn't have a very good game, it didn't sound like, so they were kind of moping around, mm. kind of depressed. Too so, bad. Too yeah, bad. Too bad. Can't win them all. You know, somebody's got to win, and it ain't always going to be you. That's true. That's true. I've learned that yeah. through life. Yeah. Um, and I think part of the mix, too, um, Minneapolis, obviously, with everything that's gone over on over the last few years. I don't know if it's drawn the same crowd that it once would have. Yeah, I, it's not really surprising. Um, God, what was the last event I was up there for? The ice fishing show. Up oh, there. yeah. Went up there this year, too, and even compared to last year, it was it seemed down. I don't know. I don't know the numbers, but right. we also went on Sunday later. Sure. But... Yeah, and I mean, we uh, like I said, we started on Thursday at like noon, so I mean, it was a weekday, you know, so stuff didn't really pick up until people were getting off work on Friday, you know. Mm-hmm. Saturday was a big day, Sunday was kind of quiet, but it was cool. But yeah, it, it just, I feel like it kind of sketches people out maybe a little bit. I mean, it was almost nonstop sirens. I got woke up like six or seven times every night with sirens going off, and you know who who knows what it was, but at the same time, it just it seemed like a lot of a lot of traffic for for what's going on. Yeah, it it probably didn't help either that it was St. Patrick's Day weekend up there. Like, it's kind of rowdy in any big city. Yeah, I mean, shit. Even some of the small towns get a little extra rowdy. A little crazy. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I don't know. It's not my cup of tea. As much as what it used to be. No, I'm cool with doing what we do. Yeah, I'm okay with drinking in the garage and yeah. not having to worry about anything. But, you know, to each their own. Yeah, yeah, eventually you'll grow out of it. Maybe, maybe not. But Yeah, that's who, true. Who am I to judge? 
We we had our fair share of days and nights oh, yeah. up in the the cities when yeah. we were younger and got to remember we're almost 30 now so that's a a little bit ago. Almost a decade ago already. Yikes. I don't think I can do Yikes. it anymore. Why do you say stuff like that to it's me? It's weird. You just made me... Ha- I think I've just suddenly breached into a midlife crisis. Because yep. now I'm like, I should go buy a Corvette. Should. Or a boat. Um, or both. Did I see a little something on the counter over here? What were you looking at there? Are you uh, you going to finally get your first gun, buddy? Yeah. I am. I, I might be oh. looking into it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. going to... I'm uh, going to go get the old permit to purchase, maybe pick up a pistol yep. for funsies and just for little HP, little yep. home protection action. A little, uh, little sense of security that yeah. thing gives mm-hmm. you. Don't right. mind having that on the hip. I think I'm going to pick up one of those. Um, you seen those lock boxes online with the, the finger press? They're just mechanical. They're not electrical at all. And, like, you can run them over with the car. And, yeah. God, I wish I had remembered the name before I talked about it now because I feel stupid. But they look really neat, and they're, like, childproof. And sure. You, yep. It's, like, your own little code, and it's all mechanical in Sure. There. But you can open it in, like, 1.3 seconds. or It's, like, something crazy. Sure. You open your access to your gun, but your kids can't get into it. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's a concern. I mean, right. you got to keep it away from... From little hands that don't know really what they're doing with it yet, and uh, yeah, I know, want to keep it accessible. You want to get it for home safety, but you also want it to be safe in your home. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I I been kicking the idea around for a couple of years and just never ha, pulled the trigger. Never pulled the trigger. You hope you never <laughs> have to pull the trigger. To be quite honest. Well, not for not funsies. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. I like shooting at stuff in the yard. Sure. Not my yard. Uh, Usually yeah. somebody, else's. somebody else's. Preferably <laughs> outside of town. It's uh, frowned <laughs> upon where I live, but... No, yeah. that's cool. Good. Um, Going back to the trade show up there, you think you got some prospects? I think... Yeah, I think we're going to be getting some calls. Good. That's yeah, good. It, was, uh, it was kind of fun to sit back and watch, uh, you know... How people gravitated towards certain booths, mm-hmm. and we spent a lot of time designing ours. You know, we built that uh, almost like log style backdrop and mm-hmm. front desk and everything, and people liked it. And they spent a lot of time talking to us. Good, a lot of interest in it. You know, it's it's a unique fishery. There's not a lot of places that have that, let alone places that were at the show that have that also. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's such unique things that come with our camp. That intrigued a lot of people. And it was cool. We ran into some people that have been there or have been going there multiple, multiple times. That's cool. That's super cool. And you just get to sit back and, you know, hear some of the stories and memories that they've made from you know, either our camp or the lake and just see their faces light up. And, you know, it, it just made us realize, like, what a cool thing we got going on. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who used to go back when uh, Shelly owned it. And they were pretty excited to meet us and everything and hear about what we have planned for the place. And yeah, I just, I think it was a a successful visit. Um, You know, I, sure, we kind of wish we had more people, but at the same time, I think the, the quality of the interactions was, was really, really good. Would you do it again next year? Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to though. Well, you know, yeah. the, the end goal is you're so busy that you actually don't need to do that kind no, that's of stuff true. anymore. That's true. But it's also a really cool networking mm-hmm. opportunity, too. Um, not only for, like, the people who already come and visit, but at the same time, networking with other people in the industry. That was really fun. You know, we had enough people up there helping us out that we were able to kind of step out and go introduce ourselves and kind mm-hmm. of make those connections and stuff. That's good. That I mean, that makes a huge difference and with what you know to the scale of you guys doing up there you need some connections you need some people who have been you know who have skin in the game already just kind of be like okay well we work with this resort and this resort and even if it's not necessarily in canada it's like here's what they order yeah on a general basis well and like for me personally being multifaceted in that scene now you know Mm -hmm. from the camp side of things from guiding and from us running our podcast and social media stuff, mm-hmm. I was able to get even more connections. 
you know, I was able to sit down and talk with other guides, mm -hmm. how they operate things. There was a group that was there. They were kind of slow. They were podcasting right at their booth. Really? Yep. Handful of people were live doing their thing, you know, so I got to talk to some people about the social media side of things. Um, and then, you know, they had huh. some professionals there. They had, so I was able to go and talk to Brian Brosdahl and uh, Joel Nelson and uh, some other big names, you know, that resonate in the fishing industry as celebrities, basically. Right. And boy, I had to talk myself up to even be able to walk up to them. <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, what do I say? Hi, Max. Hi. I like fishing. I I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. I like fishing, and fishing is fun. Can you sign my hat, please? <laughs> no, but like, it, it was really cool, too. Um, and not quite on a celebrity level, but if you guys are familiar with Thorn Brothers, um, they're a huge retailer up in the cities. And I got to meet the gentleman who owned it, Kurt. And we got talking, we bought quite a bit of stuff from him, so that kind of helps, you know, initiate the conversation. But they have a pretty big YouTube channel. And the guy that handles all of that, Tucker, I got his contact information, and I think he's going to come up to camp. Whoop, whoop. That's sweet. Yeah. That is legit. And, you know, hopefully films, and hopefully we can get him on the podcast. But mm -hmm. Kurt was awesome. He spoke so highly of the lake. He was very familiar with St. Joe's. He's never fished it, but he was very familiar. So he was able to kind of talk it up too. And, it, you know, it was, it was just cool. And we talked about wholesale opportunities and marketing up, you know, like it was just a neat, neat opportunity. No, that's legit, man. Um, just that alone almost makes the whole weekend worth it. You know, you get a contact like that who, like I said, skin of the game for a long time and knows kind of what's going on. That's that's awesome to have in your pocket. Just be like, okay, he's coming up. We're going to do a podcast. He's going to help us out with this, this, and this. Yeah. And hopefully he, you know, does some content up there too. Yeah, you know? and I, I can't help but think that that's going to take it a whole step further, you know, with other people seeing it, just using other platforms and channels to actually expose camp and... Like, what I'm doing is a guide, too, to kind of push it above and beyond. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's big things. It's fun things. And I'm, I'm not as much on the Canada side of things. Um, I'm still going to stick with the podcast side of things. But I am so freaking excited for just even that. Yeah. I mean, for you guys especially. It's, it's so exciting. Like, I can't say it enough. It, it just is. It's without words. It lit a whole new fire up there actually being involved with the people and having more communication with people, like I said, who are familiar or who are excited. You know, there were people that were like, okay, yeah, we're going to book. Mm -hmm. Do you guys offer a guide? And I'm like, <laughs> me. That's me. Hi. Like, Hi, I'm the guide. I'm the guide. And <laughs> people were just so excited to just be able to sit down and talk with me about what the lake's like and mm -hmm. how to catch them up there and, you know, the lay of the land and all of this stuff, it was just, it was really, really cool. Yeah, and you just said, and can, like, just continue, said, you just got to grip, rip, and grab them lips, huh? Yep. Gripping and ripping. Grip, rip, and lip. Grip, lip, and rip. That's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> <laughs> it. And it's a pretty simple lake in regards, but... Sure. Like I was explaining to everybody, you know, there are there's always patterns to stuff, and if you want to go out and catch big fish, you got to know the pattern, you got to know the spot to present the pattern. So that'll be kind of where I I hope I can get some of these people on. And it was cool because some of these people who've been there, you know, they come up and they're like, oh yeah, I, you know, I got a a forty two, or you know, I I just barely missed the thirty inch mark on the walleye or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yep, there. There is that, but they're floating around out there. Yeah. And, you know, if you really want to check it off the list, come on back and do it. Come with me if you want to live. Come with me. <laughs> it was cool, too, because I, I went by Thorn Brothers. Um, that must have been Friday. And I picked up a new big pike rod, new bait caster, got her all spooled up, a bunch of new big pike baits. So that tackle box is loaded, and I'm going for 45 plus. Shit, dude. That's that's the that's the the goal up there. Is there's going to be some 30s caught, 
and I want to crack 45 on a putt. Hell yeah, man. And you got a goal, you're set on it, you're going to get it. Yep. So it was nice to be able to sit down and talk with them, too, on, like, you know, really fine-tuning the big fish side of things. Like, obviously, I, I know how to do all this stuff, but just having, you know... The, the reassurance of like, yeah, these are, this is how you're attacking it. You got it right. Mm-hmm. You got it figured out. You just got to go put it in front of their face now. Right. So. Get them out there, get them on some fish and just show them like, this is a legit spot to be and you're going to love it. And yeah. Again, still not called catching. Nope. It's fishing for a you're reason. You're going to fish for it, but God damn it. Yeah, um, that's where to just being a good guide is going to. And I know you're going to be because even if you're not catching, you're just going to keep it lively and still make it a good time. Yeah. Like, and I mean, if you have to, you know, maybe, maybe tie like a dummy rod on it. You know, if you really didn't catch nothing, yeah, you just like, just trick them. Well, you pull up like a, like a fake fish. <laughs> you're like, Oh, I was driving a little robot. Fish <laughs> with an RC you're like, fish. Oh, look, you got you one. Got one. <laughs> oh put, no. It'll... Put like a little clown nose on it. It's like good for the yucks. It's like, gotcha. <laughs> No, it's, it's going to be cool. We got some other cool connections up there, too. Uh, we just applied to be a St. Croix uh, wholesaler. Mm, nice. Um, That's awesome. We actually immediately, when we got up there, I went down and I picked up a, a St. Croix uh, icon rod, a jig and rig rod, and a reel, and we raffled it off. Oh, shit. Nice. So that was kind of cool. You know, we were able to have some good conversations and people threw their hat in the ring, and we were able to give one of those away at the end of the end of the show which was pretty sweet that is awesome that's so hopefully that'll be uh like i said i just sent it off today but hopefully we'll have the opportunity to be able to put those up in the shop at camp and uh you know put some good quality rods in people's hands oh my god (laughs) Uh, we'll see how good these microphones are but yeah uh, Mom, if you hear all that extra noise in the background, it's my dog who I, uh, before we started, forgot to put back in the house because <laughs> she does this. So, apologies. Just a psycho. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's uh, cold. So, it's either on my lap or she tries to lawn chair for a while and then she forgets and hates that. So, sorry about that. Oh, sweet. I actually I just pulled up the email. Um, Looks like we are on the books. I got the dealer program in uh, terms of agreement in the catalog. And that's for who? St. Croix. St. Croix, okay. Um, and they do actually make, uh, I don't know how to say this, but they make reels now. They're either Seven or Savine. S- for real? I-I-N. Are you for real? I did see them up there, and they are very, very nice reels. Very real. For real. Very real reels. Not even kidding. I'm for real. I'm for real. So that'll be sweet. Um, I think we're going to kind of do a combination of wholesaling them up at the camp, and maybe we'll have a little shop page on the website. Oh, that's cool. That's awesome. That's exciting. If you guys need any rods or reels, I would encourage you to check us out. Um, Give us a jingle. Maybe we'll get a little promo code for the podcast or something that we can run. Ooh, I like the sound of that. So, like I said... Sponsorship? Possibly you. Possibly you. Special edition episode. We're kind of leaking a little bit of information on this one, so stay tuned because I think there's some fun stuff coming. Yeah, I agree. Um, but we also did a bulk um, branded order of line cutters. Have you okay. ever seen those? I have not. Um, you probably have, actually. Danny has one on her striker bibs. They come on all the striker bibs now. Oh, okay. They're like a little ceramic, uh, they make, uh, keep, like, uh, zipper poles. Sure. Um, and they got the double ceramic blade on each side. They also make, like, a scissors. Um, but and they, maybe I have seen it. I, I think you have. You just no. didn't know, because they're branded for Striker on all of the bibs. Sure. Um, they come stock on every Striker product now. Oh. So he's, like, he's making some moves. So, damn it, I, ju- I must have just missed it when I bought my jacket. Probably, yeah, because you got a striker jacket. I forgot about that. Oh, wait. I know what you're talking about. I do have one on my zipper. Is it, like, a square? Like, it's it's actually the zipper It's handle. part of the zipper pole, yes. Yeah, yeah. I have one. Jesus. Yeah. And I'm just being an idiot. You dummy. He was on Shark Tank. And okay. Absolutely blew up. But he had this little, like, demo up there, and he was cutting through, like, 100-pound braid, like, butter. 
Yeah. So we bulk ordered 50 of them with our branding on them. That's so, awesome. Oh, so they're going to pre-brand them even. Uh-huh. They're going to print them for cool. us and everything. So that's cool. They actually now make one that has like a Velcro ring. Okay. So you can either wear it like a ring. Mm-hmm. Or his demo was he had it on the back of his underside of his reel. Oh, sure. So that it's always attached to your rod. You just slide down, nip it, and you can retie. Pop her off. And... and if you guys know anything about braid, obviously it's a braided line. It doesn't cut very good. No, it Especially sucks. once you start getting up into the heavier poundage. Yeah. A lot of sucks. times it frays, and a lot of times you have a hard time getting it back through the eye of whatever you're tying on. Mm-hmm. This is clean. Like I'm talking, it almost looks like it was, you know, cut and burnt. Like, like factory, yeah. right out of the spool. Blew me away how clean it cut heavy braid. So we were pretty excited about that one as well. To be honest with you, I forget it's on my coat. Yeah. Like, once you said that, I'm like, God, I don't know if I've seen that. And then now that you said it was part of the zipper, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I bought the coat. I seen it was there. And I'm like, that's going to be really useful. And then I just forget. But there's nothing worse than digging around for your clippers. or No, and I do all the time. And I'm like, okay, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that's stupid. I could have saved so much time. Yeah. I just nipping it off and the, the worst coat. thing too like a lot of people use fingernail clippers mm-hmm. you ever try cutting braid with fingernail clippers then it's impossible horrible yeah it's terrible. horrible you're better off like sawing it with a hacksaw <laughs> just get the freaking saws all on <laughs> there we go there's just nothing worse than digging around for that shit when you don't have to be yeah if it's just on your person you're good to go yeah do it but yeah it, it was such a cool show you know it it was some um, rod reel tackle vendors. There was a lot of camps and resorts from all over the place. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking way, way up in Canada, Alaska, to just next door to Lake of the Woods, to all the way out to like Wyoming and oh, Washington. Oh, wow. okay. Like, That's pretty cool. There was a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and it was a mix of fishing and some of it was hunting. Mm-hmm. And uh, Is that fishing with the FI or fishing with the PH? <laughs> with an F <laughs> um, and then they had a bunch of boat dealers they had a bunch of ATVs side by sides golf carts um, Berkeley actually had a big tank oh okay with fish in it sure and they were doing like live uh, like demos fishing fishing demos yeah like they were catching fish well they would clip their hooks Sure. But they would, you know, promo. Jig on on yeah. kind of. And it was a long enough tank to where, like, they were throwing out their new Kredge crank, or their Kredge jerkbait. Sure. Showing you how the new lip design brings it up, and then it kind of flutters backwards. Oh, that's cool. They had a couple pan fishing seminars. And, like. That's it, a power move right there. That is, like, a. Such you, a flex. Like, you want to see it? Here it is. Which I give so much more respect and would be. Way more likely to buy from that brand just for that reason alone. Oh, 100%. I bet they sold so much product after that. If I can literally sit and watch you do it yep. and see how it works and then be like, well, that's applicable and how I fish. Perfect. Well, it was funny, too. Like, the one dude who was demoing some of their new panfish jigs, he would, like, pitch it out there and uh, they would just go nuts about it and it would interrupt him because they literally just wouldn't let it go. Mm-hmm. So, like, he would cut off in the middle of his speech and be like, let go, let go, give me that back, give me that, like, so then eventually he just stopped casting because he couldn't even talk. Right. So he would cast a couple times, pull it all the way up, leave it out of the water to actually explain what he was doing because he just couldn't even show a water demonstration because they were just smashing the thing. Oh, God. And they're, they're wild fish. Like, they go back out and get returned at the end of the day. That sounds like so much fun. So it was like, it's not even like these fish are starved or anything like that. It was just they were responding that well to... They're not like show dolphins. Yeah, right. You know, you're yeah, like... Yeah, like... Yeah. And then they're like... Get the, get the bait, get the bait. Yeah, no, it was... They were caught before the show. They get released at the end of the show. Um, it, it was just... It was kind of neat. Hmm. Huh. That's awesome. That... I I had kind of kicked the idea around, um, had my daughter not been sick, I was going to actually just buzz up there and just come see what was going on, but um, I just couldn't do it with the daughter, so next year if you guys are up there, I'm definitely going to come check it out, because it sounds like fun. Yeah, it was a blast, and they had seminars in like, I think it was room 101, you know, and some of those pros would come in and they would talk, you know, spring walleye tactics, or forward facing sonar settings, and like... There was a lot of cool, tangible information. Sure. 
So it, it was cool. I didn't get the chance to sit in on a, any of the seminars. I kind of wish I would have, but obviously it was kind of working. So mm-hmm. I had to find that balance of I want to shop and go learn and talk to people, but yeah. also I'm I'm up here to on the clock. Yeah, right. You're trying to you know just talk to people to get to the resort too. You yeah. weren't uh, you weren't in civilian clothes at the time. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, and I suppose I could have just you know took the break and ran off. Yeah, but, oh yeah. You know Thursday Friday it was just me and Sarah up there, so it was. Well, and you want to be a part of it anyways. Well, yeah. I mean, if, you're if a big gonna, proponent of it. And... If I'm going to be up there doing what I'm going to be doing, I want people to know that I mm-hmm. exist and that I'm up there doing what I'm doing. 100%. So, right. Yeah. It was a it was a good marketing marketing thing. So. Okay. I think that's a pretty good uh, little teaser for yeah. the week. Yeah. Um, I know we just wanted to do a little short one, test out the mics. Uh, yeah. Talk this about is... what the weekend entailed and... If um, if you catch this one before our next Wednesday episode launches, this would be a good time for some feedback because um, we're testing brand new everything yep. again. But this time, I think we got it right. Let us know what you're thinking. Um, we're going to have lots of new fun content uh, coming up on Wednesday. Um, other than that. You got anything else? Nope. All right. Hang out for a couple more days and we'll have another one with you. All right. Well, cheers, my friends, and uh, we'll see you soon. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you always. Adios.